Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to my channel. Today we're not going to be cooking. Today we are going to be filling you in on what I've been doing with my four to six week waiting period while I'm waiting for my freeze dryer to arrive. Come on in. Grab a cup. Let's sit down. So I ordered my freeze dryer September 7th. So this Thursday, it will be six weeks since it's been ordered. I have not heard anything yet as for an expected delivery date. So I'm still waiting. So I wanted to really make use of this waiting period time. Now, this is harvest season for us. Like we don't have a big garden. We do have some things. So typically for the winter, we buy tomatoes at a farm and cucumbers and we make pickles, we make salsa, and we usually freeze tomatoes to have for making sauces and stuff during the winter. This year, because I'm getting a freeze dryer, I've done it a bit differently. Our salsa, we still canned. I can freeze dry that even though it's canned and I'm gonna try some, but mostly I just wanted that in the jars. All the other tomato products, I have frozen. So if you do any kind of preserving, you know that on those days, your whole kitchen is a disaster. And Glenn goes to work early in the morning and it, on my days off or the weekend, whenever it was, uh, he brought in all the tomatoes, all the peppers, all the garlic, onions, all the things that I was going to need to make salsa and put it on the counter. So I don't get up and at it in the morning. I have a couple of cups of coffee. I watch some stuff on YouTube. I, you know, I like to ease into my day on the days I'm not working. So when I came down, the kitchen was loaded <laughs> and it had tomatoes and peppers and garlic and onions and jars and flowers that someone very special to me had given to me as a gift and I didn't have the heart to throw them out should have thrown them out a few days before but anyway i ended up throwing them out this day so i had to get everything cleaned up and then it's time to get the ingredients ready so that meant washing the tomatoes uh, we bought two bushels of tomatoes we bought a bushel of roma and a bushel of field tomatoes like beef steak type um so we you know, I had to wash the tomatoes, then I had to blanch them, and then put them in cold water and peel them. Now, I didn't do that for everything, but there were some things I just really didn't want the peels. You know, when you get the tomatoes all done, then all the other ingredients need to be chopped. So that's a big job as well. This is not a simple thing. This is not snap your fingers, wiggle your nose, and all this stuff gets made. It, it takes work and it takes time it's very well worth the investment of time and energy that it takes so once that was all done then you cook down the salsa put it in jars and put it away for the winter once you're sure that they're sealed so it wasn't just salsa that i did though again because i have this freeze dryer coming i really wanted to get things in the freezer that i could begin to freeze dry as soon as the machine arrives if you have a freeze dryer or you're getting a freeze dryer, it's always better to freeze at least most of the things that you might wanna do. It's always better to start from frozen. It just makes it easier on your machine. It's that much time shaved off the whole process uh, that because otherwise the machine has to freeze it for you and it will, but it's just more work on the machine and more time that it takes. And freeze drying is not quick. It can take 24 to 60 hours, depending on what it is you're doing, if it has seeds, if how much moisture is in it, all the different variables. So it's not a quick process. So anything you can do to shorten the time is beneficial. So I have, these are some of the things that I have gotten ready. So with the tomatoes, I made pizza sauce. 
I made uh, pasta sauce, just like a marinara type, no meat in it, just pasta or just tomatoes and vegetables. I also made just tomato puree. And those I did not peel my tomatoes. I just washed them, chopped them in big chunks and put them through my blender. Now all those saucy type things that I made, I froze in Ziploc bags because now they are kind of in a portion and a shape that will fit right on my freezer trays. So when I go to do it, I just take that frozen puck of tomato, whatever it is, and put it on the trays and it's ready to be freeze dried. The other thing I did is I kept all the peels from any tomatoes that I did peel, I kept those peels and I will freeze dry those and dry them into a powder and that will be used to flavor or to make tomato paste. The thing I love about this is I hate tomato paste out of a can. I can always taste the can. I find it bitter and terrible to be honest. And typically the recipes that I use it in only call for about a tablespoon and the rest of the can goes to waste. I know you can put it in ice cube trays. I know you can freeze it in little piles on wax paper, but I never do it and it ends up wasted. So this way, even just with the pureed tomatoes, if I make it into a powder, just by how much water you add, you can make tomato paste and just as much as you need. You don't have to make six ounces. So that is something I've been working on, getting all that done. The other thing was avocados. We bought a bunch of bags of avocados. They were on sale. So when they were at the right ripeness, I peeled them, I mashed them with some lemon and salt, put them on trays and froze that. And I will use that to make guacamole. I was thinking about making guacamole and then freezing that, but I thought I'll just do that and I can add other stuff later. Those are the things I've done so far. I also have bags of onions that I want to uh, freeze dry. And I want to make some into onion powder. I want to make some just dried onion flakes. I want to do garlic. Again, I'm going to have some granulated garlic in bigger chunks, but I also want to make garlic powder. I also want to be able to take advantage of sales. So especially like if frozen vegetables or fruit come on sale, I can grab that, put it right in the freeze dryer and freeze dry it and have it for years. <laughs> and it doesn't take up as much room like in our freezers. It's so hard to keep the like, freezers are just full and it takes up a lot of room, whatever. Anyway, I just want to be able to take advantage of things that come on sale, like the avocados, like onions, like beets. I want to do beet chips. I want to do apple chips. I want to do banana chips, um, zucchini chips. Like there's just so many things that you can do. Uh, you can freeze dry like your celery, carrots, all those things when they come on sale, that's what I'm doing. Freeze drying preserves more nutrients in your food than any other method of preservation. They say that between 95 to 97% of the nutrient value is preserved in your food through freeze drying. So even if it's 10% less than that, it's still good. So that's a big plus and something to consider. So I want to also take advantage if we have leftovers. I will never learn how to cook for two or three people. It's just not even within the realm of possibility. It's been too long cooking for 11 to 12. And as Glenn will attest, every holiday that the kids come home, I have at least three times the amount of food, dips, appetizers, everything that we need and when they go home even though i send them all with stuff we're still left with a ton of food left over i want to take mashed potatoes and freeze dry them stuffing the turkey whatever anything um appetizers i want to freeze dry them and be able then to reconstitute them down the road 
uh, someday maybe when I'm working and I get home and I don't have anything ready and it's too late and I'm too tired and whatever those kind of things casseroles just so many different options to be able to freeze dry when again sales are my big thing though like I remember one year celery went up to like seven dollars a bunch in the winter seven dollars and I obviously didn't buy it but when it's on cheap in the summer I want to get it chop it and freeze dry it uh, I can make celery salt I can grind it to powder for flavoring I can just keep it in chunks use it in soups and stews but I'm not paying seven dollars a bunch and that was probably four or five years ago so I can only imagine what it might end up being this winter so those are the things um there's so many options for freeze drying I I, I'm going to be exploring them all if I can. I want to make uh, dog treats out of the organ meats when the guys go hunting, if they get a deer, whatever. We will use a lot of the organ meats and I'll freeze dry those and make dog treats for them. I don't know. I want to dehydrate or freeze dry some of my broth that we, we make. Um, I have my own instant bouillon powder. And I know what's in it and what's not in it. And it's going to be like real food instead of whatever. <laughs> so many things. There's just so many things. There are limitations. Uh, but so far, nothing that I feel is going to affect what I want to do. That may change. There may be things down the road that I, I know fat is something they don't do well with a whole lot of fat. It will freeze dry. It's just not as good for long-term storage. So for a year or two, it's fine. But a lot of people that I'm watching, like they're, they're trying to put food away for 20 to 25 years. Anything high in fat or with much fat at all really doesn't apparently last well for long-term storage. Also, if there's a lot of sugar and things that also they don't freeze dry as well. So one of the things that we did with our tomatoes is the big field ones we sliced into slices like you would put on a sandwich or a burger. And I've watched this on YouTube. They make their sandwich with their butter, their mayo, whatever, put the tomato on and it's enough moisture that it makes it really good on a sandwich or on a burger without becoming slimy and whatever. So we're gonna try that. And if it doesn't work and I don't like it, I'll just grind them into powder and use it for flavoring. So yeah, there's so many, so many things. The ideas are just constant going in my head. Uh, but anyway, so my goal through this four to six weeks, because anybody who knows me knows I hate waiting. It's like the thing I hate the most, but it happens to me all the time. So I'm learning, I'm learning. Don't waste the waiting time. Don't waste it. So I've been using it to learn everything I can learn about freeze drying to getting recipes, to getting the food ready and pre-freezing pre, pre all the things that I want to freeze dry. Now I've run out of room in the freezer because there's still a lot I want to do and I have on hand that I could work with, but I need to get some of this stuff out first. So I'm hoping that it shows up within the next week or two and we can get this show on the road and I can start showing you how it actually works not just in theory not just the things i've learned but what i'm actually going to do with it so i know these days are a little bit um, uncertain and there's things happening in the world that are very concerning and i'm not unaware of that and honestly those kind of things do kind of become part of what i think of when i'm thinking about food security my handle is the frugal foodie mom and the frugality is is the key primary motivation for me with anything that i do basically in the kitchen i want to make the most out of whatever i have i want to stretch it as much as i can i want to take advantage of the sales don't waste the leftovers all those things that's why I'm called the frugal foodie mom. I also love good food. 
That's why the foodie's in there. But frugality is paramount. So that's my vision for what I'm doing with the freeze dryer, with getting things ready for the winter, is trying to be as prepared as possible, as frugally as possible. So I'm not having to pay exorbitant prices in the middle of winter when I could have maybe had it made in the summer and preserved it and had it much cheaper. The next thing I'm going to be doing is starting my microgreens. Now I haven't done it over the summer. I just find with the heat and stuff, they don't always do as well. And we're getting lots of lettuce and salad and stuff in the summer. In the winter, those things become much more expensive. I'm gonna be trying some new things with the microgreens this year, seeing how it works. I hope that somehow I can inspire you to try something you've not tried before or to go ahead and do something you've been thinking about and you've been hesitant. If I can just inspire you a little bit in any way at all, I, I will be thrilled. <laughs> I love what I do and I love sharing it with you. And I hope that it inspires you not to do necessarily what I do, but whatever's in your heart to do. I wish you all the best, all the best to you and your family, and we'll see you again.